Computer Systems Integer Representations. We're going to make uh, a distinction between the kinds of integers that are represented by computers. We're going to talk about signed and unsigned integers and why they have the representations that they do. We're going to then uh, look at that those representations and pay particular attention to the limitations when we use an integer that is too large or too small. We're going to use a representation that looks like a number wheel. So in this particular case, we're going to be looking at three bit numbers because it makes the number wheel easier to, to draw. We're assuming that we have W bits to represent an integer and that it's a fixed size number of bits. Because we have W bits, uh, we then have two to the W different combinations or states. So each bit can take two different states or possible states. And because there are three of them, the number of possible states is two times two times two or two to the three. So with three bits, we can represent eight possible states. We're going to represent these states in this wheel in this form. And the organization of this is that addition goes to the right and subtraction goes to the left. The bits, the bit patterns that we have, are not numbers themselves. They are representations of numbers. And we can choose to represent different numbers with them. Up to now, what we've been representing have been the unsigned numbers. So in that particular case, we assigned a pattern of all zeros to be zero. And again, we add numbers in this direction. So we go from zero to 1, to 2, to 3 in our representation. The odd thing that happens is when we're at our maximum unsigned integer value up here, 7. If we add 1 to that, we then roll over to 0. Let's actually double check that and make certain. We're going to have our